Good morning, Gridiron Queensland Community. Kenny Andres here. Week 7. This round belongs to the juniors here. We are on the Gold Coast for three, not just two, three games of junior action here today in round seven. First of which is the Gold Coast Stingrays taking on the Logan City Bengals. And uh, as per usual, I've got one of the coaches here starting with Dave Fr uh, David Francilion, the head coach of the Logan City Bengals. Mate, uh, a tough season so far. You are struggling through uh, with the troop that you have, but uh, they're showing a lot of heart. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it has been a, it has been a struggle, like we spoke about last night. You know, it's been tough with numbers. Um, you know, we have ten here today, which is which is good. We had two games with nine, um, but the boys have got a lot of heart, and yeah, we just keep fighting through. And uh, even when you have got low numbers, you usually got one or two who stand out for us. You're talking about a couple of your your speed threats last night. Um, who are those for the viewers today? Yeah, so we've got uh, number 24, Marty, um, and number 52, Cody. Um, definitely going to be looking to get them uh, involved in the offense action early and often. And, um, yeah, we'll see what they can do. And, unfortunately, had one of your troops go down in the most recent couple of weeks. It was key to your, key to your offense. What happened to him? Yeah, uh, Alex, our QB, um, unfortunately, two weeks ago, went down with a broken wrist against the Rhinos. Uh, just, just landed on it wrong, obviously. Uh, when I went over to him, it was like, yep. Yeah, called the medic over and, uh, yeah, heart, heart sort of sunk there. But, you know, we've got uh, young Josh Treffer stepping up to the QB ranks today. So, you know, he should be fine. Yeah. Finally, mate, uh, the team you're, you're taking on today, it's almost, numerically speaking, David and Goliath <laughs> between the two rosters. Um, any, any key words yeah. for your troops taking on a much numerically stronger squad? Oh, look, this, the, uh, the formula is the same every week. You know, execute, uh, stay disciplined. It doesn't matter, you know, because at the end of the day, they can only put nine on the field, as can we. So, that's Coach all. Russell, I appreciate your time, mate. Thank you. Too easy. Thanks, Kenny. Thank you. Great, Great stuff. Thank you. Thanks, mate. Lance Tonga Kilo, mate, uh, head coach of uh, both the, the senior program and also this junior program, which is about 30 strong in numbers. Mate, what's the secret? Um, just we have a lot of guys that want to play football and our job as coaches is just to help them enjoy it and teach them the game so we've got a lot of keen players. <laughs> Mate, uh, keen they are, obviously that's led to the number one ranking in the junior division this year. On top of being strong numerically you've also got a lot of talent in there. Tell us through uh, a couple of the key names we'll be looking at today. Uh, Keenan Tompkins, number four, our quarterback, he's, uh, he's had ex experience playing quarterback last year in the um, Colts division so he's one of the guys. Uh, we have a rookie. Connor Grew, a running back. Also, we have a few receivers, Luke Terry, Noah Hull, uh, Sammy Poludin, um, who have experience and pretty good players. And defensively, we have uh, Keegan. He plays D-line. He's a pretty good player. Also, Kazuki uh, Sawada from Japan. So we got some, uh, some a good variety of players out there. So it's, it's pretty good. And, uh, let's talk about some of those guys who were playing Colts last year and the move to the junior division. Obviously, that would have been a bit of a surprise for them when they were told that there's a whole new division that's going to be available to them. Was it hard for them to step away from some of their older teammates that they played with last year and then pretty much join a new team? Uh, I think so. Um, I still see some of the Colts players saying that they miss their, their younger teammates, but um, it's a good opportunity for the younger guys to get game time too. So going against people their own age is, is good, good competition. Mate, you've got a double header today, something that's never been done in Gridiron Queensland before. But uh, to be fair, you've got a roster three times the, the size of other teams. Uh, is that something you guys volunteered to do or were you asked? What was uh, I'm not too sure, to be honest. Uh, I just remember someone saying we have two games in one, one day, so we just have to be prepared for it. Uh, it's going to be hot today, so stay hydrated and uh, try to do our best rotating players. All right, so is it a situation with rotating players? You're just going to keep an ongoing rotation or are you pretty much going to play two different squads today? Uh, we'll be an ongoing uh, rotation. Uh, we'll just play how the how the game turns out and just go from there. Fantastic. Last time, Gil. I appreciate your time, mate. No worries. Cheers. Thank you. All right. It is junior round, round seven here in Gridiron, Queensland. All three games today brought to you by the junior division. Thanks to our sponsor. Get it out there. Urban Extreme Skiing Adventure Park. I'm Kenny Andres and I'll be talking you through the day along with a bunch of color commentators who will be joining me throughout. Your first game today is the first place Gold Coast Stingrays taking on the fifth place Logan City Bengals. Logan City, they are the, uh, the lone team representing 
Logan City football here in 2018. And they're led by head coach David Vansilion, a long-time stalwart for the club. And the Gold Coast Stingrays. Well, between these two teams, as I aforementioned in uh, my pregame interview with Coach Vansilion, it's a bit of a David and Goliath situation between the two, at least numerically speaking. We've got a roster of almost 30 players for the Gold Coast Stingrays today, taking on a roster of 10 for the uh, the Logan City Bengals. So if it comes down to a war of attrition, one team has certainly got the advantage. On top of that, the Gold Coast Stingrays, they boast a lot of players who aren't playing their first year of football. Last year, their Colts, the two Colts teams they featured, had a lot of young talent, a lot of 14 and 15 year old talent, which naturally falls to the junior division here in 2018. And uh, it certainly shows in their results, the experience counts. Logan City, on the other hand, they have a small handful of players who played in either youth programs or Colts programs last year, and uh, they'll certainly be leaning on a lot of those. One of those will be quarterback to today, Mr. Pfeffer. Number 88, Joshua Pfeffer, starting at quarterback for the first time here in 2018 in place of injured quarterback Alex Blythe, who unfortunately two weeks ago broke his wrist against the Brisbane Rhinos. So with a uh, fortuitously timed buy for the Bengals, they managed to keep, well, they managed to get Pfeffer two weeks of preparation for his first start at QB today. Unfortunately for them, though, they do lose him at tight end, where he has been extremely serviceable for them. The Gold Coast Stingrays, well, handling the uh, passing duties for them is number four, Kanan Tompkins, who's been someone highlighted by head coach Lance Tongakilo, someone sure to light it up. Stingrays won the toss, they elected to defer, so... Mr. Pfeffer and his offensive unit, they'll be getting offensive football first here at Narang on the Gold Coast. Round seven about to get underway. And it's a line drive, it will be picked up by number 52 if it doesn't bounce into the end zone, which it does, so we've got a touchback. And on comes Alex Pfeffer, and of course, while I say on comes, everyone bar one player will effectively be travelling on this field and will not leave the field throughout today for the Bengals. They do not have the luxury of having two teams. So everyone will be pretty warm throughout the day. Weather not too bad at the moment. Not sitting too hot, and we've got a coastly breeze traveling left to right on your screen right now which is cooling some things down so let's take a look at this run heavy offense by the Bengals Pfeffer will hand off to the fullback to begin with and it's lost and recovered by the Bengals taking the first carry there is Jessica Reed which brings up another talking point in uh, junior football and is open to uh, plenty of girls to play football as well, and that's something we see featured in both teams today. And it's uh, not something unusual. The Colts' divisions of past have featured many women, many women who play today in the senior division uh, of their women's divisions. You think about Kate Bennett over in the uh, low, as uh, the uh, Griffith Uni Thunder started at Colts with the Sunshine Coast Spartans now is playing women's football over at the Thunder and Jessica Reed takes her second carry of the day picks up possibly half a yard they'll mark her back down at the original line of scrimmage we've got third and ten now for the Bengals Pfeffer getting the play call from the sideline As we see it. third down approach. Let's see if they try to open the ball up. They'll go to a toss play. And the Stingrays are all over that one. 
And they might have actually stripped the ball from them. Let's see if the referee has called the play dead before that. Let's take a look on replay. And Marty Esdale, who's one of their speedsters, has well, seemingly has the ball stripped by Kane Mackin. But they'll say the play was finished before he lost possession. Fourth down now, the Bengals. Well, let's see if they punt this away, because that's certainly what the Gold Coast Stingrays are preparing for. to punt is Pfeffer, quarterback and punter. The deep to return, we've got 18 and 31. It's a bad snap and it will be, well, it doesn't really matter whether who was recovered by, it'll be the Gold Coast Stingrays with fantastic field position here for their first offensive possession of today. They are inside the 10. Matter of fact, they're only about four yards away from the goal line. Can't ask for much better field position than that. So, coming in now is Tompkins. He's got two in the backfield with him, including Kane Mackin, the man who almost forced a fumble. And they have a bit of a motion there, and it's a nice throw. Finding the corner of the end zone, and with the first score of the day is Luke Terry. Getting in behind Joshua McCormick. You can see the uh, fancy motion they had in place there, has the defenders looking in the back and it's a great pass there <coughs> by Tompkins. On his first pass, nets himself six points and the lead. Tompkins again, some hill hand off to one of his backs and he strolls in. That is Jai Bianchi Belcher, part of a two back set, eight nil. Score early in the first quarter. Gold Coast Stingray scoring in their first possession. There we go. Just sorting out some audio problems there. So, yes, the Bengals. Hopefully that a lot of these players, they find the love of the game and they continue to sort of rebuild Logan City football in the years to come. Logan City, a huge part of Gridiron Queensland of the years past, whether it be through their Bears, the Bruins, the Jets, which have unfortunately folded a season ago. A lot of historic football played out of Logan City, and right now this Logan City Bengal unit is the uh, the spark that's keeping it going. First and ten now for the aforementioned Bengals. They went three and out on their first possession. And unfortunately, the punt didn't quite go their way either. Pfeffer and four plays hasn't been given the opportunity to pass. As of yet, they went two fullback dives and a toss played to open up their attack. Let's see if they <coughs> schemed up any parts plays to try and open up this offense. Toss out to the right now. He'll cut back. It's a great cutback. Breaks a tackle and is going to pick up about five yards by the end of it. That's a great play there from Cody Brofton. Who's one of the plays you played, Colts, and we've got a stingray down on that last play. And it looks like it might be, according to the replay, Lauralee Clifford, who is someone who uh, has played football before. She was actually part of the Logan City Youth Program and has since moved down to the Gold Coast, and right now she is down. It looked like a bit of a hip injury or something, according to the replay. She's getting looked at it by medical at the moment. That was a good run by Brofton. He's actually probably picked up six yards by the end of it. As 
mentioned earlier. Today's sponsor for Junior Round, Urban Extreme Skiing Adventure Park. If you ever wanted to go skiing and thought, where in Brisbane or heck, southeast Queensland could I possibly get a skiing experience? Well, I can tell you, Urban Extreme allows for that. Who would have thought in sunny southeast Queensland you could be getting a ski experience? Check out Urban Extreme. You can find their website. Oh, urbanextreme.com um, Check out all the fantastic stuff they have on offer. I'm sure a lot of these juniors will be sussing it out in weeks to come, and especially on school holidays. I know a lot of private schools are on school holiday right now. Public schools soon to join them. Yeah, Mon will certainly get packed with cars going up and down enjoying their yeah, mid-sebester break. And some serious concern being shown by the staff and the medics now. Laura Lee Clifford still down. Down around the 23-yard line. Hasn't shown a whole lot of signs of moving either. You can see in the sideline the Gold Coast Stingrays. Head coach Lance Donghiela, who's double dutying this year. Co-head coach for the senior men's and also head coach of this junior program, which is no easy feat. And uh, it is part of the reason why he said he wanted to be purely a coach this year and not a player. Obviously, those plans went out the window when he had to end up playing quarterback for the team for a couple of rounds. Whilst the John Curry Curry was recovering from a hamstring injury, unfortunately, that led to an injury of his own. You can see his left hand on screen there. That's the, re the result of a compound fracture to his pinky as well as a, sorry, a dislocation and a, and a compound fracture to his pinky, which sort of break the skin, as well as a fracture to his index finger. So he's certainly out for uh, an indefinite period while his mitt gets LP. LP. looked after. Lance, who is it? And Now they've managed to rotate Laura Lee onto her uh, side, so... I'm intrigued as to uh, what could be the injury. And, well, while the doctor's looking at Laura Lee and they continue to look at her, let's check out the junior results to date so far before round seven. You can see... Starting from last round there, round five is the last update we have. The Rhinos, they got up over the Bengals, 42-0. Rhinos, the uh, second team, or the team running second in the junior division right now. And you see the Spartans, which at the time only were down to a, a nine-man unit. They managed to uh, hang in there with the Stingrays. The Stingrays are only defeating them 26-14. They'll be playing next to Spartans. They'll be taking on the Morton Bay Raptors. And uh, you can see the Stingrays' dominance throughout that first five rounds. Yet to taste defeat. A couple of big score numbers. And we'll also take a look at the table. We'll also reflect the standings as of right now. Stingrays currently lead. This is unchanged. The Rhinos second. Raptors are sitting in third. Spartans who are aiming to play finals football. They've got the one win over the Bengals a couple of weeks ago. And the Bengals still in search of their first victory of 2018. Hoping today I might just bring that against the, uh, the number one team in the junior division. But well, they're, the Bengals now, they're taking a much needed breather. A, a team down to uh, 10 players, they'll probably uh, enjoy any break they can get today. And we're finally seeing some movement from Clifford. She's sitting up now and getting looked at. You see the uh, officials for today. As Clifford is now in good signs, up on her feet and walking back to the sideline. So good news there. So it looks like play will resume now. Clifford fortunately 
Cable to walk over, uh, walk off to the sideline under her own strength. And the Bengals, who uh, get their first taste of positive yardage for today, they'll look to build on that. Well, let's see if they continue to feed Cody Brofton. That's exactly what they'll do. They'll get a toss out. He'll have to cut back immediately. It goes back to the right-hand side. He puts his speed on display. He's got a first down and is down the right-hand sideline and is knocked out of bounds around the 45-yard line. Some impressive explosion on display there by Brofton. Immediately sees the front side cut off. Goes back to the other side of the field. Proves to uh, be... Good decision as he finds a good 12 yards of that and gets knocked in bounds actually closer to the 39 yard line. So, ball currently on the 39. First and 10, Bengals. Bengals trail 8 0 midway through the first quarter. And they'll pitch to, oh, it's a bad pitch. Brofton gets on it, and he's going to have to try and make a miracle happen here. It's not going to happen as he's taken down by a host of Stingrays, including number 26, Kane Mackin, who's been featured heavily defensively today. And a drive that was going good for the Bengals, unfortunately. Takes a huge step backwards that time, losing 20, almost 30 yards with the ball being downed. Now at the 12. So we've got a second and a whole lot of yardage. Hey Ian, we did the hash marks yesterday. <laughs> one second down. They'll go. Actually, it's uh, Reed again this time, and she gets forward. Cops a shot there from Kazuki Sawada. First time we've mentioned his name today. He's a player on exchange from Japan. I've been led to believe this also might not be his first experience with American football, possibly getting some sort of experience in Japan in high school with it. But he's got the start at inside linebacker. We've got about third and 30, so almost 35 yards to go now for the Bengals. <laughs> Pfeffer with his first pass, it'll be a screen pass to Brufton, and it looked good to begin with, but it's shut down well by Ryan Go. Ryan, Ryan Go, I've been since corrected. Gow. Ryan Gow, I've been corrected for a third time, lucky. <laughs> I'm very lucky to have Stingrays president Craig James. Have I pronounced that one right, Craig? Yeah. That was <laughs> Craig James doing what he does best and making sure everyone is doing their job correctly here for the Stingrays. Off the field, that is. As we see a punt attempt here by Pfeffer, he gets it up and high. And let's see if they choose to return it. It will take a sideline bounce and the Stingrays. They'll take over about the 29 yard line. On the Bengals 29 yard line. So, on the bright side, it is a much better field position for the Bengals compared to the last place that they gave up the football. But, positive signs as well. When, uh, when Brofton can get to the outside, the man certainly has more than enough ability to do damage. First and 10 now, the Stingrays. Tompkins again, he'll turn this into a, almost a speed option look, but he's going to run with it now. Tompkins has got plenty of space down the left-hand sideline, and Kanan Thompson has a huge game for the Stingrays, takes him inside the red zone. A pass play there, doesn't see anything downfield, and decides to use number 36, Connor Grew, as a lead blocker, and 
has both a passing touchdown and a huge gain there for his stats today. Now we've got first and goal ball on the nine now for the Stingrays. Bianchi Belcher, two point conversion last time. He's in the backfield, but this will be another pass. That's Tompkins' second of the day. This time on the receiving again, Lachlan Mackay. Slant over the middle. Bengals, they send blitz. Tompkins finds the hot read, makes them pay for it. Tompkins looking sweet today. Stingray's likely to go for another two point conversion. A score currently 14 0. It's to push it out to 16 0. With the end of the first quarter looming. Bianchi Belcher. Back there again, they went to him, last two-point conversion. Let's see if they go to him again. It's a bad snap over the head of Tompkins. Tompkins under pressure and taken down. And that is Marty Esdale on the sack. So, failed two-point conversion there means the score stays at 14-0 in favor of the home side. And the Stingrays, they'll kick off again. If they will get an opportunity Try and get things going for the offense. And I think it's pretty clear from the small sample size we've gotten so far that the best chance for moving this ball will come from number 52, Cody Brofton. We'll send this one deep into the arms of Brofton. Brofton, dangerous and open space. Tries to break a tackle, does so, but the second wave collects him very quickly. And coming out of that is Sawada with the ball. But I heard a whistle, which felt relatively early to me. And that will save the possession for the Bengals. They will have first down from the 31 yard line and referees will discuss something here I think they will want to discuss this potential possession so no flags on the field so he is having a chat with Pfeffer Peculiar situation here. Or... Oh, okay, so I didn't see a flag thrown. And uh, apparently there was offside, off the kickoff. A flag I missed. And uh, I think they were just giving the option about whether they want to re kick or just take the extra yardage. The Bengals have happily just taken the extra yardage there, so they will still have first down, but now it will be on the 36. So with the best field position they've had to start a possession so far. I imagine the Stingrays will be well aware of their leading weapon in number 24, and that's exactly where they'll go back. Another toss play. He's forced to straighten early, gets it possibly back to the line of scrimmage. Second and ten, ball still on the 36 yard line. All right, here comes the Bengals again in the backfield. Reed, Rufton, who gets the ball, but it's shut down behind the line of scrimmage. The Stingrays selling out to stop this run now. Keegan, Winand, in the backfield, making a play there for the Columbia Blue. Oh, 
also Lucas Alfrank, Frank another one of these plays with Colts football last year and that'll mark the end of the first quarter the score is 14 nil in favor of your home side stingrays these two teams will swap sides Two teams will swap sides when we return. Third down and long ahead for the Bengals. You know, this is just the first of three games ahead of you today. Here in week seven junior rounds. Right now we've got the Bengals and the Stingrays. The Stingrays will be back in game three, but in between them, Morton Bay Raptors will be taking on the Sunshine Coast Spartans. And then to finish off the day at 4 p.m., the Stingrays will be back for their second game of the round, they'll be taking on the Brisbane Rhinos, which will be a top of the table clash between teams one and two. The Stingrays currently lead that competition, being in the Rhinos earlier in the season, back in round three, I believe. And we're back from the end of quarter now. Start of the second, 14 nil. The Stingrays lead the Bengals. Bengals in possession. Third and 15. Reed will take carry up the middle, grab some yardage, which will uh, ultimately help this punt. And Pfeffer coming to the sideline to check off. That's exactly what Coach Francillian wants to do, and it looks like that'll be the case. What is difficult? For them, if they get too far behind, they aren't exactly a passing team, particularly with with usual quarterback Alex Blythe lost for the season. Pfeffer back to punt to return. Bianchi Belcher, but it's another bad punting situation and into score on special teams. Lucas Alf Rank and the punting problems persist for the Bengals. Bad snap, doesn't even, thought it was blocked for a second, but is the punter just getting knocked off the ball. So the dominance featured in all three phases of the game for the Stingrays right now. Offense, defense, and special teams. Getting in and scooping and scoring. Every special team is dream. Not a whole lot of better ways to start the second quarter. In for the two point conversion now. It is a bad snap of their own. They lose it at the exchange. A bit of miscommunication there. And ultimately, they are down. It's probably the one area they haven't excelled at so far. That was Taj Borden on the attempted carry there. They are now one from three on two point conversions. They'll come back to kick off for the third time. 20 nil now. The score in the second quarter. Time of course stops for the change of possessions. And back to return is Esdale and Brofton, the two leading athletes for the Bengals unit. Desperately hoping they can spark something here on special teams. It's a high kick now that will sit about the 12 and bounce into the arms of Brofton. He'll try to slow play this and pick up a good return, but he is hit hard by Christian Denton, just shy of the 30.
Gets an impressive amount of air under that kick. Does Mackin and now the Bengals, they'll be back. To see what they can muster. All right on the 30, in fact. Now it's Harrison McMaster jumping on the field. This, this rotation for the Stingrays continues. Lance Donga Hilo covered in pregame that they're not going to go with a bit of a full platoon swap. They're just going to keep the rotations ongoing for his unit today. Stingrays showing blitz. That's what they'll do. They'll go to the fullback again and Reed. She drives very hard. Maybe gets past the line of scrimmage. In fact, loses a yard on that play. Second and we'll still call it 10. It was only about a half yard loss on that play. Pfeffer back under centre. One of the few quarterbacks that actually goes under centre and through the entirety of Grinnell Queensland as Brofton once again is forced to put in a heck of an effort to try and get this back to the line of scrimmage. Stingrays well and truly clued on to uh, what the focal point of the attack might be for the Bengals now. Once again, Al Frank wreaking havoc in the backfield as well as Harvey Butler. Does pick up a little bit of yardage though. We're looking at about third and eight now. <laughs> All right, third and eight. formation change here but Pfeffer will try to pass to the screen again he gets hit as he throws it and also gets a flag possibly roughing the passer there the pass fell well and truly incomplete let's see if the uh, the Bengals get a free first down here take a look on replay there and well with the way things are going in the NFL at the moment that would probably be a certainly a penalty at the NFL level and that is the case. We will see a roughing the passer penalty, which will give them 15 yards as well as a first down. Quarterbacks nowadays are a protected species in the game of American football. All these different rules now that are trickling down from the NFL, whether that will eventually be marked down in IFAF, but a lot of interpretations about you can hit the quarterback and sack the quarterback safely. First down and 10 now following the penalty. Pfeffer on to center. Reed and Brufton. Had tail. They'll pitch to Brufton again out to the left hand side. And we'll get met behind the line of scrimmage. Blitz coming off the left hand side. The Stingrays for the third time getting this ball free, but a fractionally after the whistle. It's Ryan Gao blitzing off the left edge there. That shuts that play down. And the Bengals now will take a timeout. We might do the same as we, once again, I think Urban Extreme for their round seven sponsorship. And just looking at the Stingray sideline, they've got a fancy contraption, I think. They've got some sort of makeshift mister on the sideline. There to try and keep their cool, uh, their team cool. How about that? You can see... 
We, uh, I think they've stopped now, but you can just see there. Because one of the team managers is um, <laughs> hosing his team down to keep them cool and refreshed throughout the day, which will be super important for this team that has to play two games today. Uh, and even giving the officials a bit of love. <laughs> I believe that is... Uh, may have escaped him, but he's the... Uh, one of the uh, school chaplains on this team that <laughs> volunteers his time managing for the Stingrays. Second down and ten. Another short run here by the Bengals. We'll bring up third down. And short game makes it closer to a third and nine than a third and ten. School at 20 nil in favour of the Stingrays. Looking close to unstoppable right now in all three phases. Buffer will try to set up a f short pass in the flat to Esdale, unfortunately. Can't quite bring that pass down, was under pressure, both him and the receiver, Esdale. Blitz once again is out Frank, but, but his nose making plenty of plays right now. Fourth down, and this will be a challenge for the Bengals who have had two punts now. Work in favor of the Stingrays. The Stingrays, they probably smell blood right now. Let's see if they can effectively get a third stop on fourth. Decent snap, and it's it is touched, I believe, but they get the punt away, and that'll uh, get the Stingrays inside their own 30 to start their offensive possession. An offense that will finally have to do a bit of work to score. They're all the way back on about the 27 yard line. Both times we've seen this offense, they've pretty much started inside the red zone. Tompkins is back. In the backfield now is 28. Taj Borden. As well as Bianchi Belcher. And it will be a stop now for the Bengals. Those are a bit of a slow exchange for the Stingrays. That's a huge play, actually. By number 60, Jack Eilerby. Second and 11. Now it's Kanan Tompkins looking long, and he's got his receiver. And Lachlan Mackay will be down around halfway. Ashton Hay on the coverage, but Tonkins looking more than comfortable in the pocket right now. He's already got two touchdowns, yet to miss on a completion, or an attempt I should say, three from three right now. Corner grew, now in the tailback. And another pass here from Tompkins, and it's another completion, this time to Harrison McMaster. Jason. Jason. McMaster getting open on the post. High snap. There's no dramas for Tompkins. And 
more water is the instruction sent from President Craig James regarding his uh, Stingrays Juniors. First and ten now for the Stingrays as the ball is now. Well, I'm not sure if the chains have moved actually because they've still got it back at the 50. The yeah, referee is discussing a potential flag here. So I'm only counting. Yeah, I'm shutting down at yeah, I'm yeah, I'm shutting down the I'm sorry, we did it. And it was a face mask on the Bengals. So on top of the completed pass, they'll also pick up an extra 15. That marches them well and truly into the red zone. And they'll be looking to add their second offensive touchdown of the day. So that penalty gets them to the 19. First and ten, Stingrays. Nope, check that. Chain's still moving. Math's being corrected. Let's call that the 13. Two backs in the backfield still. Both will be there to pass protect. Tompkins rolls out to his right, throws one to the corner of the end zone, and... Misses the receiver is for his first incompletion of the day. Pass intended there to Samuel Paludin, younger brother of Mr. Paludin, who plays in uh, the Colts and senior football in Jaden. I'm going to try and. I'm going to try and take a look eventually to take a look at that face mask again, but we'll come back to that. He goes, another pass. This one's intercepted by Brufton. He's got it in the end zone and runs it back out. A heck of a play there by the Bengals and their main man, Cody Brufton, who takes away a surefire scoring opportunity for the Stingrays and the Bengals. Deny him. Intercept on the two and he brings it back out to the original line of scrimmage. So huge play there for the Bengals. Finally, a blemish on the day for Kane and Tompkins. Possibly getting a bit confident there with the way things have been going, and Brofton capitalizes. So, first and 10 now after the huge play from the Bengals. Let's see if they can use that and ride that momentum into a bit of a drive, but they've got quite a while to go. Pitch out to the man who just intercepted it, and he'll get taken down by Ryan Gow. And I'll tell you what, Profton will be sleeping well tonight. Got a tremendous workload, both offensively, defensively, special teams. As a matter of fact, you could probably say that about everyone, though. Pretty much everyone playing a full game today. Trying to use their one bench spot to sort of rest a couple of their players right now. It's Marty Esdale getting a bit of a breather. Being saved for defense. Josh Pfeffer. Another give to Reed. Taken down around the line of scrimmage. Yeah, it's Keegan Wynand on the tackle on that play. Really, Keynes is also now on the field, sister of Kai Keynes. The cult player in the uh, Stingrays program right now. And the rotations continue for the Stingrays. Another play, once again, a toss play for Brofton. Stingray shut it down. And, uh, 
they get taken down. So not the most expensive playbook for the Logan City Bengals, but of course, there's only so much you can do, and that play will actually bring us to the half there. It's half time here in the first game of round seven, juniors round here in Gridiron, Queensland. As the score is currently 20 nil in favor of the home side and league leading Stingrays. I'm getting on Drez. We're gonna try and uh, take a look at that face mask penalty once more there, the play that got the Stingrays into the red zone. Of course, this play preceded the uh, game changing intercept for Brofton. And you can see it's a catch there to Master and then, yeah, there we go. It's uh, Pfeffer right over the top. So anyway, that is half time and uh, get up for a double header later this afternoon. First game, obviously, against the Logan City Bengals and then they'll be coming back at 4 p.m to take on the second place the Brisbane Rhinos. So the Bengals, a trail 20 nil, will probably still be relying on the skills that we see an onside kick attempt here which will not travel the necessary 10 yards. So it'll give these stingrays some good field position and uh, I'm sure the kick returners probably were excited to try and get some action there but the offense will likely take the ball here All right, first half standouts for the Bengals of an easy decision Cody Brufton playing offense defense and special teams collecting an intercept towards the back end of the second half, which kept the score to 20 nil, but also collecting the most yards for his team in the first half. And the Stingrays, quarterback Kanan Tompkins, started his day nicely with two touchdowns through the air, as well as another couple of big completions. Finished a little bit ugly though with a red zone interception. game contributing particularly in the two-point game as well in the first half first down stringer is with possession ball on the 34 yard line and another pass here from Tompkins Tompkins will load up and throw deep for the end zone and what a ball and a what a catch Luke Terry plucking that in stride And, well, the quarterbacking future looks bright for the Gold Coast Stingrays with passes like that. Coming off the arm of Kane and Tompkins. Two-point conversion upcoming, but wow. What a bomb. 34 yards. And two point conversion is successful. That brings their percentage up to 50. Four two point conversions on the day. And the score is now 28 points to nil against the Bengals. And that two point conversion in was Connor Group. To the limited role, possibly being. Saved for a lot of the Rhinos snaps this afternoon. A couple of the Game 2 teams now in the change rooms. Morton Bay Raptors, Sunshine Coast Spartans. Getting ready for their 1.30pm uh, clash. They're going to be macking to drive this ball down. Wind in his face. And he still sends it high. We get picked up by the wind and then also collected by Brofton around the 10. Tries to break the tackle of Ezekiel Kautai, but can't quite shake him, particularly once Ryan Gao came in to clean up shop.
Wouldn't be quite a fleet of foot, Grafton, but the Stingrays getting the job done now. His offensive input has been more and more limited as the game has sort of continued. The Stingrays adapting to the strengths of this Bengals offense. Twenty-eight nil. The Bengals now chasing a huge deficit. At the start of the third. Pfeffer gives it to Reed. Reed now given a bit more space towards the edge. Try and take a carry, taking down around the line of scrimmage. Picks up about half a yard on that carry. I'm just uh, Kanan Tompkins. <laughs> Kanan Tompkins talking to uh, President Craig James. They're claiming he threw a 60 yard touchdown, which I can confirm was definitely not 60 yards. <laughs> it sounds like that number sounds like that number will grow as the <laughs> day goes on. He goes Grafton again, working hard, toiling away, but not able to pick up a whole lot. Jordan. Jordan. Enough to move these chains, or at least get closer to the second chain there. We're looking at third and six. Really, two plays they'll probably go to from here. They've got the toss play to Grafton, which has been their yeah, bread and butter today, but they've also got the screen, which they've tried to set up twice. Looks like setting a corner blitz now. They've gone to a bit of a, a almost a, a pitch option here. It's a nice stiff arm there from Grafton, but the sideline pursuit is on schedule for the Stingrays, and they limit that to about a one and a half yard gain. Fourth down now. For the uh, Bengals, who will be look to be going three and out here in their second possession of the first uh, second half. Back deep to return now for the Stingrays is Noah Holt and Jackson Cremedy. on the field here, possibly delay a game. That is the case. What happened? Peter Solich telling the Bengals they took too long. Now we're moving back five yards. Well, it was about a fourth and five is now fourth and nine. Hang on, they're just going to go for it now. They've said, look at this, we'll go for it. Pfeffer's going to drop back and pass. He's going to try and set up the screen, and this will be intercepted by the Stingrays. And matter of fact, it'll be turned into a pick six. Late flag, so the touchdown might not stand. Multiple flags down now, back near the intercept. That intercept was collected by Christian Denton, but whether it will stand is another story. And we've also got Bengals down now, or at least a Bengal down, back near the 20-yard line. And I think the intercept will likely stand, but whether the pick six does is another story. By my count, it might be a block in the back here. I don't know if we can grab another look at that at all there, but... Yeah, I think it uh, was a situation there and I think we've got another replay queued up here. And 
I'm just going to see after the intercept, just keep an eye out on the far sideline. And while that block's clean, I'm not sure what that one, and it's the player Dan who got sort of blindside block there, and whether they call that about defensive player, I'm not sure if they deemed him the back looking the side to me, but it's the player number 80 who's currently down. There's a nice block on Brufton, and then there's a block on the side there, seemingly by Kane Mackin, which the argument could be made was in the back. So it looks like this intercept will stand, but the touchdown that followed, that could get wiped off the board. <laughs> the argument now is about whether it was in the side or in the back. The referee is discussing that now. What out, Petey Solich. Now I'm going to give the signal to the home sideline. No, it'll be uh, it'll be targeting. So it wasn't an argument about whether it was on the back or in the side. They're going to say that it was helmet to helmet contact. And uh, targeting penalty. Well, they might have issues there. We have seen suspensions being handed out for targeting over the past couple of weeks, which has led to a whole bunch of online debates. So. Kane Mackin might be, and as this way he's brought over now to discuss the situation, because it can lead to both either suspensions or even ejections, so let's see how Petey Solich wants to handle this. Oh, it's back now. Cool. Yeah, it's back now. So, You're still talking. I am still talking indeed. <laughs> Getting Craig James trying to uh, talk to me while I'm on air. Tim Redshaw, he's uh, going to be refereeing later today, I imagine. He's crossing me commentary box. There's still a kilo out there now. Getting the referee's instructions and interpretations about how this will be handled. Just to confirm, the touchdown will not stand, so the score is still 28 points to nil in favour of the, uh, the Gold Coast Stingrays. So six points was wiped off. And so the Stingrays' offence will still have possession, but that will take away the six points by Denton. So the score is 28 points to nil. trouble and he's getting spoken to by his assistant coaches right now and what will be interesting about that if there is some sort of given the the back-to-back -back nature and it looks like he's been told to take off his gear so he could be ejected I'm not sure and now they'll have a changing quarterback here and this pass will be intercepted by the Bengals their second intercept of the day First pass by their new quarterback. And well, he almost loses it there. They're claiming that he has 24, Marty Esdale. <laughs> Possibly got a bit of aid there by the ground. The referees didn't see it though, so they're saying that the Bengals have possession. That was the first pass there by number 35, Max Carson. He's now being rotated in. And uh, probably not the start he wanted for his quarterbacking duties here this morning, or well, actually check that this afternoon as we tick into or past the noon today. And it's another give to Reed. Reed's going to try and wrestle over Sawada, but Sawada wins that battle. What was the penalty? And they're still getting 
a targeting call. I'm getting a bunch of folk here. If they are uh, trying to figure out what channel it's on, if you look at the Gridiron Queensland Facebook page, you'll be able to watch it live. And uh, th third down, the sideline here is still trying to get a uh, call on what happened to Mackin there. And Mackin is getting his gear off, so he has been ejected for targeting here in the second half. And the uh, score on the screen is incorrect. It is 28 points to nil. And that's another run there to uh, Esdell. So we get some things checked out here. Third down and long now for the Bengals. Bengals offense has struggled, but credit to their defense. Once they have sacrificed some points, they've had two takeaways in their own half so far. It looks like on offense for the Stingrays, Custom will be staying at quarterback. He's warming himself up on the sideline. Throwing passes at Sam Paludin. Stingrays hoping that Samuel Paludin ends up anywhere close to the town of his brother Jaden. As another big play from this Stingrays defense. Earns them the ball back. It looks like there'll be a turnover on downs. So check that. They just moved it down the counter a bit early there. Fourth down now. Fourth down, double sticks. Looking fourth and more than 20 to go. Cody Brofton. Back into punt. Butler, one of the returners back for this thing raise and a flag being thrown here I'm thinking it could be for delay of game again no false start so an early jump for the Bengals and credit to these two teams that's the first false start of the day so I'll take half distance now to the goal, which will move them back to the five, as a result of the penalty. That would have been anywhere else in the field. And they've got a very, sh the two returners are very shallow here. They think this pump will go higher rather than longer. Twelve and thirteen, Butler and Cremedy as. Under pressure is the punter. Now he's going to run with it. He's going to have to do a whole lot, and he very well could do that. And, well, we'll have to see where he stepped out of bounds because he's gotten awfully close to a first down here. Once again, Curdy Brofton. Whether that was an intentional, I'm not sure. It was a bad snap. He just sees Columbia Blue all up in his face early. Decides to let his instincts take over. And you can see right there it is around one of the fives, and it's more than enough for a first down. On fourth and long, Ruffton pulls out a miracle. And actually, it's coming to the sideline now for a much deserved break. Just literally pulled out his get out of jail free card with that one. Ball on 35. Pfeffer, under center. We'll try to give this to Reed. No, it was supposed to be that option play again. Pfeffer's trying to reach behind to recover the Stingrays. Could have this. And they're still marking that a Bengal ball. But it will still be a huge loss on the play. The ball was on the 36. And it looked like to be about a nine yard loss. The ball's now on the 25. Trying to link back up with our uh, referees, trying to get a time check. So the score on the screen obviously shows uh, we've run out of time, but there is a few minutes left in this third quarter. And they'll go to the option out to uh, Esdale. Esdale 
won't have a lot of real estate to work with. It'll be taken down pretty much as he catches the pitch. The Stingrays defense happy to go sideline to sideline. And doing a good job sealing the outside is Butler there. One of the kick returners also playing cornerback now. Balls now on the 20. And another inside give to Reed. Possibly gets them one. That'll bring up fourth down. And I'm getting the punt symbol, or single. Sorry, the scratch off signal. Third time. From Coach Francilio. Let's see if uh, that is the case. We saw last time they thought they were going to punt and ended up getting a miracle run by, as we see, actually that's the end of the fourth quarter, uh, end of the third quarter, moving into the fourth now. So we'll uh, be moving to the fourth quarter, which will start with a Bengals punt. Two teams come to the sideline and it's getting warmer here as we cross into midday here on the Gold Coast. And once again, as we move to the fourth, we'll uh, thank our sponsors again. Uh, thanks to Urban Extreme, back in 30. Today's today junior round sponsor. Plenty of stuff to suss out there if you're uh, ever in the Kendra area. Trampolines, we've got parkour exhibits, ninja warrior setups, and of course indoor skiing as well. Where else in South East Queensland can you get a skiing experience? Fourth down and forever now for the Bengals. This time it's Pfeffer back as Ponta, who uh, possibly doesn't quite possess the same running threat that Brofton does. So more likely to see a punt out of this gentleman. 28-0. The score is here in the fourth quarter. And you might see a sideline penalty here, actually. Now, Pete Solich is coming up and speaking to the ref uh, sorry, the uh, coaches for the Stingrays. They're looking at the sideline. Seen a couple of penalties against the sideline on live stream this time this year. But and I'm wondering exactly what it is. Coach Tony Aquilo seemed perplexed. I did hear someone say, <laughs> get back in the box. So it could be something as academic as players not being inside the players' box. Can't really see them on live stream there, but there are markings on the field that players are supposed to stay behind, followed by another box that coaches are allowed in. Where it could be the case that the ball has not moved though, so maybe consider it a warning. Another awkward long snap there, but good enough for Pfeffer to get a punt away. And it'll be marked out of bounds around the 34-yard line. Make that the 33. So here we are in the fourth quarter now. School's 28 to nil in favor of the Gold Coast Stingrays. Two turnovers forced by the Bengals has kept the school that way in the most recent possessions. But offensively, Kane and Tompkins, his right arm's been on fire for the Stingrays today. Three touchdowns. And 
blitz by here by the Bengals. And oh, there goes number 36, Connor Group, grabbing his second carry of the day. And that's enough to get pick up about six, maybe seven yards on that play. Call that second and four, four and a half, probably more accurately. And now for the Stingrays. And relied predominantly on the passing game to get their points on the board here today. Let me said, their offense has not been on the field for all that many plays, despite the scoreline today. It's been huge plays here, and now it'll be a pass, and now he'll have to run for it. And it's a good stiff arm there. And what looked like an average play to begin with turns into points there for the Stingrays, Max Cusson. Taking it out for about 26 yards on a quarterback scramble. You can see a bit of confusion there, but the improvisa improvisational skills coming to the forefront there for Cusson. As well as a good stiff arm there, so that pushes the score to 34 points to nil. Two point conversion here, or a successful two point conversion here, I should say, will give the Bengals the option to go to a running clock in the fourth should they want it. Currently sitting at 50% of the day on two-point conversions. And that will drop below 50% now after a huge play there from Esdale. Esdale, the edge defender. Coming hard off the left edge. Stopping that play in the backfield. So 34 points to nil. Interesting to see the Gold Coast Stingrays rotational system if they really dig deep into the twos and threes now. We've already seen evidence of it. Carson stepping in a quarterback and a couple of changes in the backfield defensively. Their front has seen a couple of new faces as has the uh, the cornerback rotation for them on defense. So with the game more or less settled for them now, probably half of the fourth quarter remaining. Imagine we'll see a lot of their starters coming off now and being rested for their clash with the number two ranked Brisbane Rhinos later this afternoon. Another news, Laura Lee Clifford, who came off with an injury early in the first quarter. She's out of kit, and so she will not be returning, but she is up and walking around. Here goes Brofton again, trying to set up his blocks. He's found some space around the edge now. Can he cut back? He, the flag has been thrown and we got an early whistle. The whistle was blown. But Brofton was well and truly inside the field to play. I'm surprised they called it. And we have got a flag back down near the 25 as well. And when he makes that step inside is where they I heard the first whistle. It seemed inverted if you ask me because it was only a short burst. Freeze now, we'll discuss the flag here. Once again, another acknowledgement to our week seven sponsors, Urban Extreme. Urban Extreme at Ski and Adventure Park. And it Kendra. Can you call now? And it's a holding on. Marty Esdale on the Bengals, so I'll move them back 10 yards from the spot of the foul. So the field just got a whole lot longer for the Bengals. They'll start this possession on the 
13 yard line now. So close to the full field for them to travel to add their first points of the day. And keep in mind this clock on screen is only a guide. We've still probably got a good couple minutes. And this will be a fake to the fullback. Now Pfeffer will try to run with it. And he's wrestling off. Literally almost all nine of the Stingrays on the field right now manages to pick up a couple of yards. So credit to both parties on there. Pfeffer keeping his legs churning for some yardage and the Stingrays are getting all nine hats to the ball. Further credit to the, uh, the ball carriers as well, to the Bengals. So far, the Stingrays have been relentlessly trying to get that ball away from ball carriers. And they're yet to surrender a fumble on offense. On special teams, they have given up a, uh, a fumble return for a touchdown during one of their punts. And actually, that run turned out a lot more than I expected. That probably picked up six yards. We've got second and four now. Another give to Reed. Reed, well, have I put the mocker on him? They did fumble, but it's recovered by one of the offensive linemen. Safely back in possession. Number 14, Ashton Hay. Jumping on that football. So third and five now. They've shown they have got a couple of sort of gadget plays. Couple of screens, couple of option plays. They'll need one here on third and five. No 52 in the game. It is as they are tailback, and they'll go to the pitch to him. And he's found a bit of space. He probably could have kept going north south. He breaks a tackle and bounces to the outside. Looks like he'll be just short by Mike. And let's see where he's been downed. Down counter looks like it's just enough, so that's enough to move the chains. A first down here for the Bengals, and uh, as we get closer to the end of the second part of our sponsorship by Urban Extreme today, so it means that uh, two players, one from each team, in each game today will be getting vouchers or urban extreme give vouchers for a two for one ski lesson or a one hour park pass at urban extreme so a big thank you to our game day sponsors for looking after our players like that and uh, I will have those players announced to you as we get closer to the end of the game second down and ten now after that last run blade. Second and ten now. Pitch out to the right. Back in the hands of Esdale. This time, no such luck. Taken down in the backfield. By a couple of stingrays, including Christian Denton. And Ryan Gow. Also getting in the backfield. So third and double sticks. That's been a feature today for the Bengals. I've also managed to convert a couple of those opportunities. Will it be a third or fourth down? Esdale, the running back. Pfeffer under center gives it to Reed, Reed squirts through for a couple of yards. That'll push us to fourth down and 14. A couple 
from Miss Renning. We're still trying to get in touch with our lead official there to try and get us a time check. No luck as of yet. Pfeffer back to punt. It's a good snap. He gets it up off the right boot, and this one might even be returned. Won't be the case, or will it? It will be, but only for about a gain of a yard or two. There, the short return is by Harvey Butler. First and ten now. Once again, it's Carson in a quarterback. Last possession ran it in from 25 yards out for a touchdown through a pick on his first pass. This time, gets a completion. Good stiff arm there by Tompkins, who's now playing receiver. Gets the catch. Good stiff arm takes him down to the 10. So, I'll be taking snaps off a quarterback now and getting the official two minute warning. Two minutes remaining in the game. First and 10 now for the Stingrays. They are just outside the 10 yard line. Ball's on the 11, so they can actually squeeze in a first down. Just short of a touchdown. Carson, Carson looking to the left flat and gets a nice grab there by number 18, Sam Paludin. Good enough for about a four yard gain. Second down and seven. Getting some of the parents there, getting updates about whether they can get access to this footage. And now it's Cussin again. Cussin won't be touched and in for his second rushing touchdown of the day. And that's another six pointer on the board for the Stingrays, pushing the score to 40 points to nil over the Logan City Bengals. And it's actually a really good block there for the wide receiver, which could actually be Tompkins there. Proving he's happy to do the dirty work as well. Passing the year here, Cussin throwing for the back. It's a nice ball and almost a nice catch there by Luke Terry eventually. The defense knocks it out there, so good play from both, well, all three players involved there. Almost a nice grab on the coverage. Is the main man for the uh, the Bengals and Curdy Brofton. Bengals now will get a final opportunity as this win picks up towards the dying seconds of the fourth quarter. Try and put points on the board. If anyone's going to do it, it'll most likely be 52. Missing the sideline there. And it's a new kicker actually rotating to the kickers now. Christian Denton getting an opportunity but beat the ball. It's a line drive will go in the hands of Brofton. Brofton takes it up around the 12-yard line. Very patient with his run. And puts a stiff arm on and breaks a couple of tackles. Ball taken eventually to about the 33-yard line. They'll have probably just over a minute. I'd imagine maybe it's a little less. Try and put some points on the board.
First down now. And it'll be a fake. And it'll eventually pick it out to Brofton. Brofton will try to shake the tackle, but it's a good tackle there from Denton. Takes him down around the ankles and limit the game to about a three, maybe four-yard game. It does keep the clock running, so it looks like full time will be called any second now. And matter of fact, it's definitely close to a third down. And we're seeing a timeout for the Bengals now, who are going to try and dig in deep and do everything they can to uh, get a score on the board. That is a timeout to the Bengals. short break we might take a time out ourselves thanks again to urban extreme Extreme.com.au. Suss them out. They will be more than welcome to uh, have your presence over at Kendra. And also, the uh, giving out Player of the Game awards today. Reed and a fullback. No, they'll fake it to her again. Pfeffer fakes and shapes the pitch it, but takes it himself. We've got a couple of yards out of that situation. Another timeout here to the Bengals. So if they've been working on any trick plays, they've probably only got one or two players left as an opportunity to do it. And as I mentioned, three games today. Very close to finishing off the first of three. All brought to you by Urban Extreme Ski and Adventure Park. They'll be giving out their gift vouchers for the players today, which today, one from each team. Not hard to pick one for the Bengals. Number 52, Cody Brofton for the Bengals. And an offside on the defense is being called on that play. And that'll move them forward a bit more, so every... Yard counts. And another pitch here to Brofton. Brofton puts his foot in the dirt, starts to go north, driving forward now, and picks up a first down. And that's another tackle there to number 11, Lucas Alfrank, who's had a big day. And the third and final timeout used here for the Bengals. So they'll have no more timeouts left after this, and they will have. About 46 yards to conquer to try and remove this goose egg. sideline leave the Bengals so I don't know if it's a pep talk or running through a trick play but Francilion is trying to get some message across to his unit and probably something along the lines of finishing strong. No timeouts remaining now for the Bengals. And we've got two tight ends and one only one wide receiver and a fullback. It's another pitch option. Now it'll get it out to Brofton who gets it, but in a very precarious position. He's going to circle back all the other way around, spins out of one tackle, and all this unfortunately will be in vain. An impressive effort, but eventually will be shut down for a loss. 
there on first down. And this very well could run out the clock. And that looks like that'll be the case. And that is full time here in the first game of round seven in the juniors game where the Gold Coast Stingrays have defeated the Bengals 40 points to nil. Kenny Andres has been talking to this game for you. I'm about to go down and meet with the plays of the game's number 52. Back here with the players of the games, tough game. Both of you, both of you, always performed. You are today's uh, opening stream players of the games, Mr. Brofton for you, Cody. Thank you. And then for you, Mr. Tompkins, you. our two players of the games, mate. I'll have a quick word with you guys, mate. Uh, your right arm was on fire today. Had a good couple of passes. Must be pretty happy with that first half in particular. Yeah, you, uh, you know, I just went out there, executed. That's all you can do, really. Mate, and for yourself, Cody, uh, look, <laughs> hell of a game, but you uh, certainly showed you're uh, an athlete to deal with in this league. Uh, thank you, bro. I'm there. Play hard every game. Didn't get the win, obviously, but it's all right. Done <laughs> subs. There it is. First game, your Urban Extreme, two players of the games here in game one. 